Okay, getting real close to popping this uh, primary cover off and seeing the uh, last phase, I went ahead and took the uh, clutch cable off. The cable itself looks pretty good, no fraying uh, near the end. Uh, we did discover uh, a lot of metal on the inside. So, first thing I'm going to do is uh, drain any fluid that might still be in the uh, cover. Got a 9 16 inch uh, bolt right down here for the cover. It would be nice to be able to put a uh, socket on it or use the uh, uh, closed end of this, but you can't because there's a through bolt, uh, which is a little lower engine mount. So, we'll go ahead and start this drain here and uh, see what kind of treasures we have in there. Hopefully I don't have more in a quart, uh, if not uh, get to witness a giant spill. So here we go, the bolt. So I've got a number one Phillips here. I'm going to apply some more pressure and with my adjustable wrench here. Nice. That one. We're doing good so far. Okay, good deal. Uh, looks like we've got a couple on the inside I missed here. So might even be 14 bolts. Right, three. Almost identical engine on the Triumph Trident uh, T150. Uh, you've got all these uh, bolts that have a, a number one Phillips head. Loosen that up. See if that's going to help at all. Use a flat tip uh, screwdriver. Be normal uh, half inch bolts. Just enough to get a socket on there after I relieve all the tension. So you gotta pop off there easy. That spring gets some tension on the whole uh, clutch mechanism here. So right now I'm just gonna run out this whole uh, clutch engagement system and. Uh, Got some parts like that. I uh, got some ball bearings sitting in there. You can see when this arm rotates, uh, what it does is it looks like it pulls uh, on this shaft, and inside you'll have your diaphragm springs and uh, items like that, which uh, help to uh, disengage the clutch. So we're looking uh, pretty good right now. Should be able to uh, get this off, and we're almost there. Go. So the inside of the cover itself, uh, we've got the uh, chain tensioner. Uh, now that I see what it looks like, I surely could have uh, loosened up that bolt a little bit more. It uh, actually fell down into the oil. And everything's uh, looking pretty good. I had a couple of bearings just fall out. So I'm going to take a look at the uh, inside here. I'll lay this upside down so I don't scratch any of that uh, gorgeous aluminum. Now we've got the... Uh, the chain itself right here, uh, you've got the bearings, bearing cover. Actually, this all looks nice and clean. The oil pump, everything looks really clean on the inside. The trick is to all this is obviously the transmission moves, so that's not my problem. This right here going into the engine, the crankshaft, uh, I'm just going to we give it a quick twist, twi uh, twist with this crunch crescent, and surprisingly now this rotates. So the engine itself is not frozen as I originally thought. But going around, something's wrong because I cannot even begin to kick over the engine uh, using the transmission. So. I may not dig into this any further, uh, but this gives you a good look uh, into the side of the primary. So, next up, uh, instead of an engine rebuild, I'm going to have to rename all the, uh, the videos. I'm going to be tearing into the transmission uh, because the, uh, the Kickstarter goes through the transmission and uh, engages uh, this chain, uh, I believe, which uh, then turns over the, uh, the crankshaft. So, even though the loud noise I heard, 
I thought it was coming from the right side of the vehicle. Uh, obviously it was the left hand side when I first started the vehicle. Loud screeching noise and wham, it just seized right up. So, that being said, let's hope it's the transmission. Uh, that's a lot easier to fix than all of the engine. So, uh, this ends this part uh, and we're going to dig into the transmission next. Still investigating uh, why the engine won't turn over.